You know what? England is just too big, man. It's really hard to ride in a country as big as this, especially when you do not know the roads. As you can hear, I'm panting because I I came to Uffington Castle grounds and turns out there's no castle here so I walked up a hill for just a chalk white horse and that's it. Well at least the people in uh, England or the UK in general are pretty nice, they are courteous, they are helpful, uh, a lot of things really. I enjoy I enjoy you know talking to them. It's funny how how um, despite being so courteous and helpful, the people in the service staff uh, service line, you know, if you went to the train station or if you went to a kebab place, they don't tend to smile a lot. They have a face that looks as if like their mother just died. I don't know why. Even though they have that kind of expression, they are still pretty helpful anyway. There's a car behind me. I let him pass because I don't want to go fast here. The, the road is too narrow for me and I'm not familiar with the roads even though I have a GPS here. The funny thing is, when I bought this bike, the guy that loaned, did the paperwork and did the rental for me, he asked me, so how do you find London? Uh, I told him I enjoyed it very, very much. The people were very nice. And I think I could be comfortable uh, traveling around London by myself or even staying there. Uh, and then he told me, you know what? He hated it. He hated London. He hated, he hated this place. He hated England. And I... I guess I, I guess if you stay here long enough, there's some things uh, that you eventually learn to hate about a particular country. It's no different. I stayed in Singapore. I was born, bred. I'm a true blue Singaporean, and I've been there for 27 over years. And I do know that you know there are some things I hate about my own country as well. The countryside is really beautiful here. I wish it was something that we had in Singapore but I wouldn't uh, trade the convenience of our road network for, for this sort of thing any day. It's nice to travel here in England once in a while but if you know I have to travel uh, from my work to my home in this kind of conditions every single day I would I would kill myself. And the thing is, uh, I took uh, quite a number of motorways, you know, expressways uh, on the way here to Uffington and the Hellfire Caves and I'm heading to Avery Hinge right now. And uh, as you see right here, I'm, I'm traveling about 60 km per hour, but on the motorway, it's not uncommon to be traveling at anywhere between 140 to 150 km per hour. Really, really fast. The drivers here are insane, man. Insanely fast. I can't keep up with them. And I feel like, you know, if I weren't uh, extra careful, I could kill myself on their roads 140 150 kilometers you know Singapore nobody travels faster than 90 kilometers an hour unless you are overtaking on an expressway maybe 100 kilometers per hour but not not for long because you know you get caught by cops anyway and you have to pay a fine and speaking of 140 to 150 kilometers per hour speeds that was what I was traveling at and boy you know a lot of people say you know you can't ride without a uh, having earplugs on 
And I always thought, you know, that's bullshit. I have never ridden with earplugs. I never had had a hearing problems, and it's fine. I could survive without earplugs. But after traveling at those speeds uh, over here in, in England, I can tell why all those uh, European and American riders keep saying, "You're gonna go deaf if you don't wear earplugs, man," because. I'm wearing a, a cheap helmet as a 700 it's only 100 bucks it's a, it's a cheap helmet and I swear if I had uh, gone this kind of uh, speed and stayed here for long without earplugs I would go deaf anytime soon the wind noise is terrible man especially considering that um, the, the UK is a pretty windy country compared to Singapore where there's really not much wind as long as you are riding in the city centre far away from the coast there's not much wind in the first place so I can, I can understand why people wear your plugs now the English countryside is really beautiful man It's a good thing I got this if you have 600 Hornet because without without this bike if I took a sport bike not only is it gonna cost more but I'm gonna pay a lot more for petrol and I probably couldn't be traveling you know this far out of London because the roads here you know if you want to get from place to place in England it's really really far and gas stations are few and far between it's not like Singapore where you could really hit a gas station uh, almost any time you want to, it, they're everywhere, so you never have to worry about you know not having enough gas on your trip. But over here, I I don't dare to travel the moment my gas tank is half full. I'll try and find a gas station as soon as possible because it is really really scary uh, about when you're gonna find your next gas station. So a good thing is that with this CBF 600, I'm not, you know, uh, eating, chewing through my gas so fast. You know, now that I, I think about it, I'm in the countryside. I hope, you know, uh, wildlife don't just hop in front of me and and hit me because that would be a very bad day for me, man. The roads here in the countryside are really scary because it's mostly gravel and this the paved roads that i'm on they are uh, rough and they have a lot of uh, little bits of gravel and mud uh, around it not to mention that you know sometimes if you want to park in this place you're gonna be parking on uh, on dirt areas so there was one point where i parked uh, on a dirt patch it turns out to be not just dirt it's mud with grass over so the the bike pretty much sunk a bit and it took quite a bit of effort to to get this hunk of metal out of it especially considering that this isn't a really light bike at all whoa Okay, I'm not, actually, I'm not actually going that fast, but... Whoa! Oh, my arm hurts a lot. You know, these things, gas stations, I used to think they were just normal things, but these things are life saviors. You know what? I shouldn't have brought a helmet with a tinted visor because while the tinted visor is perfectly fine even with the with the decal on uh, in Singapore over here man I can't see shit even in the day I have 11 miles left to Avery Hinge 11 miles left to Avery Hinge what's 11 miles? 5 kilometers? Uh, should be quite fast I'm more worried about a return trip because I think 
by the time I'm done, I'll be leaving every by 5 or 6 and the sky will get dark really soon I'm really afraid of returning to London in the dark but I have no choice because that is where I'm staying I, I just hope that there isn't much traffic after, after night night falls in London it's even worse over here if I don't get out of uh, the rural areas and hit the motorways by uh, before it turns dark, I'm screwed, man. Because I won't be able to see shit. Oh, this particular stretch of road is beautiful. Look at that sheep. So many sheep. You know, I noticed a big difference between the drivers and riders in uh, England and Singapore is that uh, drivers here t are really serious about the use of their turn signals uh, when they are making a right turn or left turn or they are shifting lanes whereas you know in Singapore nobody bothers with, with their turn signal in the first place and I think this is good because honestly speaking, if nobody uses turn signals here, people are gonna die. Seriously man, how far is Fbury Henge? I've been riding like forever now man. 1.6 miles to go. That last 10 miles felt like forever. Fbury, okay, okay, I'm here, I'm here. Now to find the hinge itself. Oh look, it's Fbury hinge. It's beautiful, man. Wait, what the hell is the parking so far away from the rest of the hands, man? Oh, okay, okay, it's just right behind the uh, the hands. <laughs> 